How's it going, YouTube? This is Alex coming at you for T-Vape TV in the studio with an extra very special video for you today because today we have the Ariser XQ2. I'm super excited to dive in and talk about this bad boy, but first, we got a new poster. It's Back to the Future. It looks sick. If you want to win this poster, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit like and comment on this video or the next video, and we will be giving away this poster the video after that. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So first we're gonna go over what's in the box. Inside the box, you will find just so much stuff. The Ariser XQ2, which just looks absolutely gorgeous. The power supply cable, the manual, a remote control, a spare filter, a pick slash tool, two, they're not called cyclone bowls anymore. They're called the connoisseur bowl. And also you get these heat resistant uh, top and bottom thingies, rubber things. I don't, I don't know what they're called, but you understand what I mean. They protect your fingies when you're trying to pull this out of the device and it's super hot. You get a glass aromatherapy dish. You get two bags and then the little top thing for the bags. And I'll explain how to do that a bit later, as well as a cap for the bag, which is an interesting addition. And you of course get the classic Ariser whip. And lastly, you have your glass elbow. So regardless of which method you are going to use to consume, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take that bowl, that cloud chamber, and stick it on the device. As you can see, it's gone through a bit of rigorous testing. Now is a great time to talk about the difference between the cloud chamber and the flavor chamber. So they've put an inbuilt glass filter into this, which I think is an absolutely fantastic decision. You can use the filters that are provided to add a little bit more protection, but I think it's good on its own. I would just recommend a medium grind. That being said, there are two ways to use this. You can use this as the cloud chamber, which means you can put a lot into it and you'll pump out a serious amount of clouds, or you can use it as a flavor chamber. And if you fill up just this little area in the top here, your herb will be a little bit farther away from the heater. And so it'll be just a little bit more pure convection flavor. After that, then you just attach the whip or the bag as needed. So in order to use the whip, you fill it up, like I said, whether you're going the flavor chamber or the cloud chamber route, uh, and then just make sure there's a filter on the end of the whip and stick it in the top. Then you're gonna press that on button and the temperature will automatically heat up to the set temperature in the bottom corner. You can adjust that by using these up and down arrows on the side here. And then you're just gonna wait. And in a less lit setting, this actually flashes orange, yellow and orange when it's heating up and it flips over to green and can make a beep if you'd like it to. Or if you find that annoying like I do, you can turn that off in the settings super easy. Once it has reached temperature, then simply just inhale. Or if you're feeling like the laziest person there ever was, you can hit the fan on and just blow this into your mouth instead of having to suck on it. I'm sorry. The other way you can go about it is to turn on the device and heat up the heater before putting on the bowl. Um, this allows for a little bit more like pure convection flavor. I personally have done it both ways. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I just leave it on there and then turn the device back on. It's up to you really. The other thing they've included with the Ariser XQ2 is a little cap for the bag, which I found incredibly helpful if you are having a solo session and don't wanna take a whole bag to your face all in one go. I don't know. But in terms of the bags, they're actually super easy to put together. I already put this one together because I think it's gonna be super boring to watch me do it. Essentially, this gaskety sort of thing is two pieces. So you're gonna take the opening of the bag and push it up through the center of the bottom piece and then fold it back outwards. And then this rubber piece just attaches onto the top which secures it in place and makes sure it's airtight. Then you can stick the mouthpiece in through the top and fill it by using the elbow, then attaching it like this and turning the fan on to fill the bag up. It's super easy. I feel like I made it sound more complicated than it actually is, but you'll be able to figure it out. Considering that the Extreme Q could already reach a top temperature of 260 degrees Celsius, there really wasn't anywhere for the XQ2 to go. That being said, that range is massive. In fact, way bigger than it should be. And I, well, I mean, it's great to have it in there if you're vaporizing other botanicals, but 
I wouldn't, if you're vaporizing dry herb, I wouldn't go higher than anything around 230, 235 if you're feeling spicy. Genuinely, I my top temperature is always 225, 230 if I'm really pushing it. Of course, it is full and complete precise temperature control and you can adjust in one degree increments. The other thing I did wanna briefly bring up in the temperature section is it's a lot easier to use this remote than the previous one. Uh, and you can specifically dial in your temperature super easily from a distance, which is pretty cool too. The redesigned herb bowl called that, that connoisseur bowl that I was talking about before, actually puts your herbs a little bit closer to the heating element if you wanna use it the cloud chamber way. If you do it the other way, it's a little bit farther. So they gave you that room to sort of customize it yourself. I find practically that it works exactly as intended. If I wanna have a knock me off my ass session, I will go with uh, the cloud chamber way. <laughs> so many chambers. I will go with the cloud chamber way. And if I'm just like, it's the end of a night and I just want something a little bit tasty, I will go with the flavor chamber. I also think it allows for a more complete extraction, which is great because it's something the Extreme Q kind of struggled with without a bunch of stirring and ensuring that you cook everything evenly. Like I said before, my favorite part about the new Connoisseur Bowl is that glass filter that's built in. No more messing around with those screens. You can simply just dunk this whole thing in isopropyl alcohol. All in all, the vapor quality produced by the XQ2 is denser and certainly more potent than the Extreme Q. Of course, the fan speed you're using if you're filling up bags greatly impacts the density and the cloud production and overall extraction of your herb. But I found after weeks of rigorous testing that it is overall better flavor wise and extraction wise. In terms of heat up time, the XQ2 reaches temperature in about one to two minutes and you can expect to fill a bag anywhere from two to four minutes, obviously depending on that fan speed. Another general tip, when the XQ2 reaches temperature, if you're using the whip, I would leave it for a minute to make sure that air gets nice and hot before you inhale to ensure that you're getting a nice big hit. In terms of manufacturing quality, this guy, I mean, I don't think I have to tell you, but the redesign of the shell just makes it look absolutely gorgeous. I think it looks futuristic. I think it looks really good. And I really like the accessible buttons on here. The biggest change in my opinion is that LED screen. It's a big step up from that like digital clock style blue screen. And overall, I think the look of the XQ2 is beautiful. The other thing I wanted to say, the amount of stuff that you get in this box is incredible. Not only that, but they've actually made the glass connections even more tight. So you have a full air seal. But all these small upgrades to the manufacturing design, as well as the larger upgrade of the look and the LED screen, make me fully aware that Ariser put a lot of effort and detail into the making of this device. I just wanna highlight this again, because I really do think the user interface has been greatly improved. They've added a fan speed directly to the front of the device. There's still the settings that you would normally go through and you can change the lights on the bottom. I know they're not really showing up well here, but you will see them in the vapor shot. You can change the lights to be a dedicated color. You can keep them the way they are. You can turn them all the way off. There's a lot of customization that can happen with the XQ2. The Riser XQ2 is definitely an upgrade over the Extreme Q. The Extreme Q itself was one of the first vaporizers I bought. It's been a great budget option. It really competes with the Volcano in terms of the Volcano's two or three times the price, but you get a lot of value from the Extreme Q. And the XQ2 has improved on all the things I loved about the Extreme Q. Realistically, the vapor quality doesn't quite stack up against the Volcano, but I do think it improves over the last one. And, you know, the XQ2 is going to be cheaper than the Volcano. So you sort of have to make a decision there. I had absolutely zero problems with the vapor quality of this device. But at the end of the day, it has a more accessible interface and better vapor quality. And what more can you want? They also give you way too much stuff in the box, which is always a nice touch. And that's it for this one, people. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, please tap, tap that like button. If you think I missed anything, if you'd like to see a different vaporizer review, if you're like, dude, sweet poster, make sure to hit subscribe, like, and comment on this video, and you will be entered to win it. Until next time, my name's Alex for TVAPE TV, and for all you connoisseurs out there, keep vaping.